What can I do to make a difference? That seems to be the question on everyone's mind, when our contributions seem so small in the grand scheme of things. I set out in my local community to discover individuals who are promoting sustainability in their environments, and ultimately, living local. For our first mission, we teamed up with Kiwanis International on their one-day initiative, which set out to clean up the Indian Creek in Aurora from the debris and abuse that had been occurring over the past couple of years. One of the future phases of River Edge Park will be a natural area at the end of Indian Creek, where you're going to be working today on Indian Creek. At the end of Indian Creek, we want to have a conservation educational area that features that creek as it enters the Fox River. We don't want things to enter our river that are not good, are not healthy, uh, are not looking forward to the future. So what you're doing today, your cleanup today, is very, very much appreciated by everyone involved. And I do want to thank the Kiwanis for such an excellent job of organization. And Cheryl here, what a great organizational job. We must have 300 people out here. But most of all, thank you uh, on behalf of Aurora and the whole area for the cleanup today. It makes a big difference in our community. Thanks so much. Well, Indian Creek uh, runs totally through my ward, and it's been a problem in years past from debris and abuse. And with the help of this organization over the last many years, it's a better creek than it's ever been. It'll save a lot of homes from damage and disaster, and it's much appreciated by all the residents and more one. Thank you. I know from experience that when the creek gets filled with junk and debris, that it has a tendency to back up and causes flooding in the area, and nobody likes having to get up in the middle of the night to bail out their basement because their basement's filling with water. So. I know from experience that uh, this creek it has happened to a number of times and anytime I get the opportunity to help clean it up, I'm, I'm willing to help out. Before we got started on our trek, we had to gather a few materials. Some dirty shoes, a plastic bag, some wristbands, and these things. We had a lot of fun with these things. Ah! <laughs> I'm having a blast. I'm on the hunt. <laughs> trash. See this? It's a plastic bag, you know. <laughs> this is the downside plastic. Gets in our waterways. Gets everywhere. Kills everything. Plastic bags are bad. And plastic isn't all that we found that day. We spent the day picking up some interesting things. Something worthy of a fake toast. We pulled out everything ranging from candy wrappers to a full car seat that had mysteriously made its way into the river. Spencer even made a new addition to his wardrobe. No, this is better than thrift stores, man. Got a new Ace Hardware shirt. It was amazing to see how much our stuff can pile up over the years if we are not careful of how we dispose of things. The animals weren't so happy about the waste either. Working together as a team of six, we filled our first two truckloads within two hours, all while learning from the residents about how much the health of the river impacts the local community. Five women in this neighborhood brought the problems of this creek to the, to the city council, and they spent millions fixing this up, and they made it really hard for the uh, outlet mall to get approval without uh, all kinds of steps taken to make sure there'd be no more flooding in this neighborhood. And that Northeast Neighbors is still going strong 25 years later, all because of these five stubborn women. One of them being the first ward alderman now. She was one of the originators of it. So we started a neighborhood group 
uh, to try to get the, the problem fixed. It took us 20 years, but we got a $7 million flood control project implemented by the state. If you ever go down Molitor Road, uh, just uh, east of Farnsworth Avenue, there's a big hole in the ground. Yeah. Well, that we got built. And it uh, took a lot of people out of the floodway, flood plain, saved a lot of houses from flooding. We had three 100-year floods in a row. Very unusual. And then uh, in 96, we had a 500-year storm. And that whole hole was totally full. And if that hadn't have been there, houses would have been filled up on their main floor. So the power of four little housewives sitting over coffee, you know, really turned something in good. But the creek runs right through um, a lot of the neighborhoods that I'm the alderman for. So it's so important to keep this creek clean. And by all these volunteer projects, saves the city money of having to go out there and uh, clean it and it provides a great benefit so I just tickle pink it hasn't been done since 2010 so uh, it's had a time to get some build up and by evidence of what I've heard of some of the stuff you know you could probably do it on a more regular basis and such but you know it's great for a community effort and, and cost saving to the city and to the residents. For that, I thank you. Aurora is trying to be very um, green minded. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's by keeping the drugs out of the water system. We drink river water. So if we can eliminate um, a lot of the medications that are going into the, the rivers, the creeks, because in turn we're, you know, trying to clean it and uh, drink it. So in my ward, we're trying to do um, LED lights also to save on manpower for replacement, better light, uh, increase safety. So those are just some of the, the green things that, you know, as a ward um, that I can do and help with. After a long day at work, Randy invited us to join him back at his ice cream shop, Banana Split. We got to put our Sunday making skills to the ultimate test, as we were given free reign of everything in the shop. After learning how to work the equipment, let's just say we didn't take the phrase free ice cream lightly. I am at ice cream, getting free ice cream. So, who wants to start? This one's all chocolate. <laughs> And you tell me when you uh, think we should start. I don't start. know. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't want to cheat you if you want, because you get to make your own. You can have as much ice cream as you want. <laughs> oh, Somebody's waiting for yeah. extra. Jimmy's a look. Keep your cone all the way up there until it's filled. You don't want to cheat yourself. Oh, okay, good point. Yeah. Uh, now go wider. Okay. This is absolutely. All right, hold on. <laughs> don't want to move that much. Just a little bit. Okay. Then you gotta lift the handle when you say you're done. Okay. <laughs> that is gorgeous. What have you gotten there? Hot fudge. Hot fudge and two, four, six cherries. Dang, look at that. Are you in heaven, Bob? <laughs> this is unreal. <laughs> I, I need a spoon though. Oh. Caramel, hot fudge, put oh. on what you want. <laughs> With our crazy concoctions in hand, we listen to Randy share some of the story as to how he established his business and what he does on a daily basis to support green efforts. I own a local business and uh, my philosophy is uh, clean business is a great business. So I like policing my property as well as my local neighbors and the park across the street from my business. I don't uh, push my beliefs on my neighbors. I suppose I, I do it more by action than by words. I figure if I do it, maybe they'll see me doing it and join in. So I, I'm not a big uh, soapbox person that follow me, but follow my actions. I feel real good because people like you who are coming up, hopefully we'll be doing something about this. Making people aware of not to do this kind of stuff. Yeah. Open a window and pitch it, or throw it out and have it go downstream. So, 
it's 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 a good learning experience. Really, you should be proud of yourselves. Yes, you Thank should. You. Thank oh, you. Really. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. You're impressive. You hear mm-hmm. a lot of BS about bad stuff going on, and mm-hmm. this, this is. I feel great today. Yeah, I really absolutely. made my day. Our next stop was the Green Earth Fair, which is an annual festival held in Naperville, Illinois, that features different speakers and exhibits that focus on teaching people how to live green. Held at McDonald Farm, which uses organic and sustainable practices, the fair offered a wide variety of learning experiences for people of all ages. In the kids' garden, we help children plant seeds, explore the soil for critters, and make bird feeders. Is that a little worm? It was so funny when she first got her sandbox. I find another one coming out of that door. What is this guy here? Do you know what he is? No! No, there's another one coming out! You see one there? Does dirt help you grow the trees? Yeah. Where do you want to put the pink What else can you grow in the dirt? Or this one. Can you grow flowers? That one right there. Can you grow carrots? Yes. Can you grow... Oh, let's try Can again. you grow horses? Here. Yeah. Maybe if we you can grow horses in the dirt? Okay. No. No. My name is Pat Armstrong, and I'm representing the Wild Ones, the Greater DuPage Chapter. We are a national foundation that uh, is interested in educating people about the value of native plants. And so that uh, we started out in Wisconsin, but we became an international or national organization when we established the first chapter in Illinois about, I don't remember now how long ago it was. Yeah. Around 92, yeah, 1992 I think it was. So since that time our one chapter has grown to about six. And so that we educate people on the value of using native plants in their yard, cutting down on the horrible ecologically unsound, ooh, chemical dependent lawn and water dependent lawn, and instead replacing it with native habitats that will supply food for insects and birds. And so that I'm the farmer. So That's what we do. In my own yard, I happen to have 340 species of native plants that I planted most of all from seed, including the trees. And we have a passive solar house, which is also makes electricity from the sun. And so we have. I put out. A, I put out a little bag of garbage like this about every six weeks. Wow. So I don't even need a garbage collector, but I have to pay for a garbage collection. <laughs> I also sell my electricity back to the city and I make the most electricity in the hottest time of the year when everybody else is making sucking it in for their air conditioners and I'm selling it back to the city for people to use for their air conditioners so I don't need to have an air conditioner because my house is so superly well insulated. I decided at one point to anything new that I put into my yard is going to be a native and I pretty much stuck to that although I you know I still have some non-native like big old evergreens and things like that. I have a large yard and I was curious about what to do with certain areas that are difficult to mow the grass in. So I went to a, actually I went to a talk given by Pat Armstrong and found out about the wild ones. And I thought, well, these people can help me uh, with my problem areas in my yard. And I certainly have. Now that spot where a creek runs through my yard is a wet prairie. I'm just happy to be part of Wild Ones. I've been an environmentalist from birth, 
my grandfather was a farmer, my aunts and uncles were all farmers. I spent a lot of time on in my summer vacations before I started working uh, on the farm. We'd go to, go to the farm for a vacation and work. Um, but I learned something about the fact that farmers are very, very careful about the way they use their land. And um, so I've always had that concept in my mind that you know, if it's wasteful, it's not good. And uh, so I learned the fact that you know, uh, from my dad and my grandfather that whenever there was something that could be used, you didn't throw it away. This was true because we, even I grew up in a, in a city or in, in a village called Loves Park, Illinois, and we always had two or three large city lots with which we would, we would raise potatoes and corn and beans and, and squash and things like that. But we would never waste anything. If we couldn't give it away, we would can it. So we always had the concept of the fact that you know, there was always a use for everything, so we never threw anything away. So I have the same kind of principle now, and my philosophy is, you know, always leave it better than what you found it. So I've always kind of had that feeling that, you know, nature is to be preserved rather than to be abused. So that's what my basic thinking is and so forth. And, and as far as composting is concerned, you can see our compost pile here. It's been accumulating for uh, oh, three, four, five years now that we keep throwing our, our, our yard waste and our table scraps, that which is not, uh, that which then is at least uh, capable of, of breaking down in a short period of time, we compost it and then we use it as fertilizer. Uh, using it for conditioning the soil and for helping to uh, make the soil uh, richer and more fertile so that it grows the plants better than when it came in before. When the compost is ready, the, that which is on the bottom of the, of the compost bin here is already decayed and ready to be used in the garden beds. So I'll take the end off from the compost in here and I'll take my spade and go out underneath here and I can shovel it out into the wheelbarrow and it looks like black dirt is what it really is and then we can spread that on the garden and uh, dig it into the garden and it is wherever we want to use it. I also uh, have a large garden in, in Wisconsin and uh, uh, there's only so much that you can use but that that we can't use, we give it to the neighbors. Uh, there's a food bank in Eagle River, Wisconsin that we contribute particularly a lot of uh, zucchini squash and a lot of green beans that we can't eat or can't freeze. We, we give it to the food bank so that uh, somebody is always putting it to good use. And um, so that those are you know, just some of the things that I've always thought were important. And, be able to do and be able to help other people and also understanding the fact that you know, uh, if you can help others in what you're doing, if you help the, the environment by, by using things and uh, sustaining the environment, oh, I think that's, that's kind of a, a neat thing to do. And it's a kind of an interesting story that uh, uh, the guy that, well, in fact, I'm doing it for a friend, he had always had a cottage up in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. He had never done any gardening before. And he says, you know, I'm going to be up all this time and i got to do something. So he had this big open area, uh, which had previously been just a, a, a gravel pit and so forth. And he said, I'm going to start gardening. But then when he died, his wife said, but I don't want, I don't want to say, let this go back to weeds. Would you like to... Would you like to do the gardening here? So, so that's when I started raising, or that's when I started taking over the garden spot and raising things in Wisconsin. It's just a, a, a good way to spend part of my day is outside working in the garden and seeing what I can grow.
Since we had become pros picking up trash along the Indian Creek, we decided to help out McDowell Woods Forest Preserve with their trash problem. Second piece of trash found. Yeah. Oh, what'd you find? Cigarette. People are smoking here. Yep. Ditch that one and use this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in a scary movie and she's like about to die. No! <laughs> Hannah, not seriously use this one. Yeah, it's I so feel much like better. stuck, guys. Seriously, help. <laughs> okay, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Oh my gosh, she's going in. She's going in. Wait, Hannah, your foot's getting stuck. <laughs> All right, she's going in. Apparently, Hannah, no. In. Oh! Yes! We got it! Oh! God! <laughs> we got it! What did you just do? I got a tire out of the river. <laughs> yep. She did. Look at her shoes, they're proof. Oh, nice! Nice and wet, soaked. I'm very committed. I take really a lot of pride in nature and what I do for nature. Using a piece of wood we had found by the river, and what limited strength we had, we hauled the tire along with the rest of the trash that we had collected throughout the day to a disposal container. It was a long trek, and we got very close with the tire. There's Tyrone the tire. Our BFF. It's our boy. <laughs> I think we may have gone a little crazy spending all that time in the forest, but they say the best way to get in touch with nature is to become it. Yeah. We've got an injury. I can't believe you did that. What the Ow, heck? It kind of hurts now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> you didn't notice? No! The it's guys like, were like walking by and they were like, did she know that she's bleeding? <laughs> Screw it all. It makes me mad. I got cut for doing nice things. No good deed goes I unpunished. You wait for me, eh? Butthole. Madison, what inspired me to teach young people? It was sort of a natural extension of worldview and able to, you know, teach kids to go and enjoy nature and then preserve it is just one of those things that yes, may look. <laughs> it just fits. Is it easy to make an environmental impact a positive one? It is. Whether it's removing invasive species or the, the project that you're working on and the other kids in class you're working on, go out and find something. There's always something that you can do. Simple steps for uh, for people. Well, a really easy one is to recycle. You know, eating less meat is very easy. Uh, growing a home garden. I'll look for something with less packaging or no packaging. You know, um, things as simple as not taking the plastic bag when you know you can simply carry the item and those are those are some easy ways that really anybody you know living in the suburbs can can do to make a difference. When you make the environment around you a better place, I mean it just helps it it feels nice to live there, you know? And like when you're going into the prairie path or whereabouts ever you're going and you're just, just uh, getting a feel for the species, you know, and just and just working with the environment and trying to grow closer to it and improve your local ecosystems, I think there's no better way to get in touch with nature than that. Just go outside as much as you can, you know, because you yeah. get that 
The world, is, the world is out there. We gotta go out there. All right, we can't just stay inside. Yeah. We were put on this earth for a reason, and it's not to be inside 24-7. No one was like, yo, stay inside. Yeah, They're all like, no yo, one, stay no one. outside. In conclusion, <laughs> the world is here for, for us, us, but we can't hurt it, so you gotta stop pollution. Stop pollution. Stop littering. Stop littering. Uh, you know, all that non Plant some cool trees. Stuff. You know, go outside and explore build a garden. nature. It's neat. Go outside and build a garden. It's a rewarding lifestyle because of the fact that, you know, uh, I enjoy being out in nature and I enjoy what nature has to offer and I think that anything I can do to, to sustain it and to encourage other people to sustain it, uh, that, that that's kind of reward in itself. So get out there and live local. I love nature.